So in Doxra DB4, we have three major new features. Uh, one of them is they're here on two of them are here on this new report uh, menu. One of them is data tables. We've looked at those previously. Data functions we've looked at previously. The third one doesn't have its own menu box here uh, or menu button, but it's uh, data-driven fetchers. And I'll demonstrate those now. Let's suppose uh, 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 this deals with fetchers which fetch passages from folios. So first let's look at a couple of folios that I created as samples here. I created a folio named Catalog Bargain and another folio named Catalog Upscale. My bargain catalog contains some cheap items like ramen noodles, tube socks, shopping bags, soda crackers, ballpoint pen. And I'm going to open up this folio so you can see what's in it. So each entry here, each passage has a photo along with some text. There's my ramen noodles, there's my tube socks, and so forth. So I have a catalog of items. These are all cheap items in my bargain catalog. Let's take a quick look at my other catalog, sources, folios. Catalog Upscale is my other catalog, and it has things like champagne glasses and diamond rings. Let's look at that one. There's my Upscale catalog with a lot of expensive passages. Two folios, two catalogs as a starting point. I also, in those two folios, tagged some items as featured. This month, say, we're featuring uh, tube socks. See how the featured check box is checked there. And we're also featuring ballpoint pens. See how the featured check box is checked for ballpoint pens. So two of the items in this catalog are featured this month. Same thing in my upscale catalog, a whole separate catalog. But in this catalog, I also have a featured tag, and right now it's being applied to the golf cart and the diamond ring. Just those two items in this catalog are featured this month. All right, that's all our preliminaries. Given all of that, what I want to do is create a, a document here, a form, which asks for uh, your favorite hobby. What's your favorite hobby? Several choices here, golf, movies, reading TV, or wine tasting. Based on the response there, I want to fetch the featured items from a particular folio. If your uh, favorite hobby is wine tasting, then I want to tell you about the featured items in my upscale catalog. If your favorite hobby is TV, then I want to send you uh, uh, a list of featured items in our bargain catalog. So the folio that I use is dependent upon your answer here. DoxRawDB lets me build the name of the folio in a derived answer. Uh, uh, in, in previous versions, your uh, folio selection was limited to answers where the form user chose the folio. But now the folio selection can be controlled by the form author. So I've created a derived answer here. This is a derived answer type. And it says catalog dash. And then in some circumstances, it's going to say the word bargain. And in other circumstances, it's going to say the word upscale. Let's look at those two conditions. If the hobby is movies, reading, or TV, then it's going to say the word bargain. And if the hobby chosen is golf or wine tasting, then it's going to say the word upscale here. And when that when that all resolves, we're going to end up with the name of one folio or the other. This fetch code here 
In fact, I'm going to build this fetch code from scratch so you can see how it's done. I'm going to delete what's here. Here I'm going to fetch the featured items from whatever catalog is indicated here in my, my folio answer. Whichever folio that may be, that's the folio from which I want to fetch my featured items. So I'm building a fetcher here. I click the fetcher button. And which folio do I want to look in? It's either going to be catalog bargain or catalog upscale. I, as the form author, don't know which it's going to wind up being. So I'll make it variable. And the name of the catalog is contained in the My Folio answer. That's this answer right here. Whatever it says here, that's the name of the folio that I want to use. Look in the questionnaire in the My Folio answer. That gives me the name of my folio. Then which passages do I want to pull in from that selected folio? Well, as the form author, I don't exactly know in advance. So I have to go to the Variable tab. And I say, in this case, I want to fetch in all the passages that are tagged with that Features tag. So I'm going to turn off the Name Contains checkbox. I don't care what the name of the passage is. But I do want to turn on the Tagged with Passage tag checkbox because I want to pull in all of the catalog items that are tagged with the, there it is, tagged with the featured tag. And that might change from month to month. This form might behave differently next month than it does this month because next month maybe different items will be featured in each one of those two catalogs. So we're using a flexible answer over here. We're using a flexible tag over here to create this fetcher. When I use this uh, form as the form user, let's, uh, well actually let's save it before I try it out here. I'm going to click File, Save As. I'll put it on my desktop and we'll call it a Catalog. Save it as a template. And then try it out. Let's suppose my answer, my favorite hobby is golf. When I click Fill, I end up with a golf cart and a diamond ring as my featured catalog items. If my favorite hobby is TV, when I click Fill, I get featured items from a whole different catalog, tube socks and ballpoint pens. The key, here, key is here, this answer is driving the selection of the folio, and this answer is, is built in a derived answer. It's constructed based on other information in the questionnaire, a much more flexible way to select a folio than I was able to do prior to DOCSRAW DB4. Now the next one here is even more spectacular, I think. This one, uh, in this one, first let's look at this mailing list. I have here a whole bunch of names. We've got, let's see, about 500 names and addresses here basically, emails and phone numbers and so forth. Uh, the key column I want to focus on here is the state column. Notice that we have a two character abbreviation for each state. Each one of these people lives in a particular state. I've also built a folio, sources, folios, named sales, what did I call it, state sales policies. And I haven't filled in all 50 states here. I just filled in the first uh, one, two, three, four, first seven states here as examples. But for each state, indicated the, the passages are named with those two character state abbreviations. For each one, let's look at the folio itself, I've put in our sales policy for that state along with a, an image of that state. So here's my sales policy for Alabama. Here's my sales policy for Alaska, Arizona, and so forth. And like I said, I didn't do all 50. I just did the first seven here. Here's our sales policy for Connecticut. So a folio 
of sales policies for each state. Let's suppose in this example, I want to list uh, some people. And for each one of them, I want to uh, show our sales policy for that person. So I'm going to put in a questionnaire. And in this case, I don't even need to ask a question in the questionnaire. I'm just going to go ahead and pull my data directly from a data source. I'm going to create a list here from a data source. The name of the source is mailing. The table I want to look at is the people table. The column I'm going to uh, show in my list, I'll put in their first name, uh, sorted by last name, and the appearance is going to be a table format. I'm going to have just two columns in my table, and that'll do it. So this is going to give me a list of first names here in the left column. Uh, I'm going to expand that a bit. Let's put in the whole first name, last name, and address in our left column. So I'm going to add in some fields here. I'll put in a field for the last name of the person, then a card return. I'll put in a field for the person's address. Remember, all of this information is contained in our external data source. And the last line here will be city, state, zip. So a field for the city, a comma, space, a field for the state, and space, space, a field for the zip. I want to include all that extra information not only for the first item in the list, but also for the middle items. So I'll copy and paste there. And again, for the last item. So all of my items in the left column are going to use the uh, identical format, name address format. The right-hand column, I want to show the sales policy, the appropriate sales policy for each one of these people, depending on what state they live in. So I'm going to put in a fetcher code here in the right column. Remember, a fetcher code is going to fetch a passage from a folio. The folio that I want to look in, in this case, unlike our last example, in this case I know exactly the folio I want to look in. I want to look in this state sales policies folio. I don't know for each one of these people which state I want to fetch. So I have to make that variable. Go to my variable tab here. And what determines where can I get the name of the appropriate passage for this person? I can't get it from the questionnaire. Remember, my questionnaire doesn't even have any questions in it in this particular form. I have to go to the data source to get it. This is a new tab available in DB4, Docs DB4. My data source tab allows me to go straight to an external data source, in this case my mailing data source, looking at the people table within that data source. The column that I need to look at is the state column. Remember the state column contains a two-character abbreviation for the state, which is also the name of a passage in my folio. In my state sales policies folio, I have a passage named uh, AK for Alaska. I have a passage named CA for California. This is, this is saying look in the data source for the current item in my list. Remember this whole thing is a list structure. Look at the current item in my list. Look in the state column for that person. That's where you will find the name of the passage that I want to fetch. I hope that makes sense. Uh, I'm clicking OK there. There's my Fetch button. Remember, this refers to the current item in the list. So I can just copy this Fetch code and paste it down here so that the current passage will be fetched for each of these middle people, and paste it again down here so that the current passage will be fetched for the last person in the list. Then, I don't even need a question in the questionnaire. I can just hit Fill. I'm going to save this first, though. Save as 
this is going to go on my desktop. It's going to be saved as a template, and let's call it uh, sales policies. And before I run it, just to speed things up here, rather than list all 500 of the, these people, that would take a couple of minutes. Instead, I'm going to make this a sublist. And I'm going to say, here's my sublist tab. I only want to show the people whose last name starts with Z. I've only got a few people in that uh, Excel spreadsheet whose last name starts with a Z. So this is going to give us a sublist that only includes those people. When I click Fill, I end up with one, two, three, it looks like four. Here's Sheridan Zane, lives in California. And we've fetched here our sales policy for California. Vincenza Zepp also lives in California. So again, we have fetched the California sales policy over here. Serena lives in Alabama. So we fetched in a different sales policy with a different graphic. Having a hard time selecting it. And then Jerry lives in Colorado. And we've fetched in the Colorado sales policy here. Let's imagine for a moment that you're uh, uh, the, one of the largest real estate management firms in the, in the world. And say that you get a, um, a potential customer wanting uh, warehouse space in Tacoma, Washington. How easy would it be to uh, take down a couple of particulars? You know, how big, um, how much uh, electrical power, do you need gas, do you need water, whatever it is and have, because of the magic of that condition in the derived answer and the ability to chain conditions to make them a compound and complex simultaneously, you can have DocsRod DB 4.0 um, make all those choices for you and create in just a matter of seconds all the text, uh, all the graphics, uh, all the facts that you'd want to make that uh, either as a reference for your salespeople to uh, to make a uh, uh, an intelligent answer, or to uh, to to actually create a catalog and ship it out where it's custom made for the customer's um, uh, request. Uh, the power is just absolutely amazing. Scott, that's right, and that's the key to this third feature: is now folios and passages become totally flexible. Uh, whereas before you were restricted to uh, answers from the uh, direct answers from the form user to determine a folio passage, now you can have all the intelligence built into those decisions built right into the form itself, uh, and so the form is able to intelligently select the appropriate folio and the appropriate passages based not only on information contained in the questionnaire, but also based on information contained in the external data source. DocsRod DB 4.0 is our most powerful uh, software ever. It, as you can see, is as easy to use as the rest of our software, incredibly intuitive. And here, here's the secret. 4.0 is up and available right now this morning. 